Right, quick run through of my bio settings. Okay, so I have an MSI Meg 798 as the motherboard, um, and my CPU's uh, an Intel i9 14900KS. So, and I've got, um, my memory is 7,200 memory, but I've got it overclocked at the moment, okay? Right, so these are the settings I'm using. So, um, if we go into the advanced um, tab first, um, PCI, and what have I changed in here? I think I've changed this to be specific to 16, um, here instead of the A, um, instead of the auto. Uh, make sure your resizable bar's on your GPU. I don't think I've changed anything here. That's, right. uh, that's all default. Integrate peripherals. Now, um, I've got my, I've got put it, put in an additional network card into my computer. So I don't need the, the, um, the network cards that are built into the motherboard. So I've disabled them. My motherboard's actually got two um, two internet ports, two two controllers um, built into it. I, I don't need either of those because, as I say, I have an extra um, internet network adapter card. Um, so I turn those off. I don't need any Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, so I turn that off. Um, I turn off more Bluetooth stuff. Um, I'm not sure what that is, but I don't think I use it. That's more that's more um, Wi-Fi stuff and Bluetooth stuff. Um, and the audio controller I don't use. It, basically, that's for if you plug in lots of um, audio cables into the back of your PC. And I don't have any audio cables in the back of my PC into the motherboard, so I don't need that either. So you can basically turn off anything you don't use. Um, what else we got? Um, integra integrated graphics configurations. I've got a KS, which comes with integrated graphics, but I don't need that because I've got a, a 4080 um, GPU, so 4080 Super GPU. So I, I don't need the integrated graphics for, for on the actual CPU, so I turn them off. Again, turning off anything you don't need. Uh, Thunderbolt I'm not using, so I turn those off. Uh, USB, um, I, think I, I think these are default maybe, or do I turn off, I might turn off the handoff actually. Um, do not go into here and start turning off USB ports. Um, if you do, especially if you think, oh, I don't need USB 2 ones, you'll find out very quickly that your keyboard and mouse, no matter where you've plugged, where you've plugged them into, are plugged into via USB port, to USB 2 port. Um, and then you disable these and you literally can't get back into the BIOS to turn them back on again because your keyboard and mouse are disabled. You've got no way of doing it. So the only way to then do that is to hard reset um, um, your CMOS, do a reset of the CMOS and completely wipe everything on your motherboards, um, BIOS, start again, enable factory defaults, and then put these back to normal. So do not play with these, my recommendation. Just, just don't, just leave them alone. Okay, next. <clears throat> I don't think I've changed anything in any of these. I turned off the driver install utility. That's a thing when you first install Windows that it pops up and says, do you want these extra drivers and things? Uh, boots, um, turn off all fast boots. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Um, I disabled anything that I'm not using to boot from. So that's my hard disk. That's a, if I insert a USB stick, that's the second option. So I just have those two options and I disable all the other options. And if you've got multiple Windows installs, you might have a different option in here to choose additional uh, boot managers from. So um, I've only got one hard drive on this and I um, that single boot manager is managing multiple windows installs Makes sense. right security anything i've changed in here is the secure boot and disabling it and the reason i've disabled that is because i use usb hid usb f to overclock my gamepad controller for gaming 
um, if you want to overclock your controller, you need HID USB-F. That has a non-certified um, certificate um, for the driver. And so if you have this enabled, it then won't allow it to start up with the computer. So you can't overclock. So you need to disable secure boot if you're running um, HID USB-F. Um, I don't think I've done anything with these. Right, OC. So first thing you want to do is change it into expert mode instead of normal mode. That's normally my normal mode by default. Um, so in this latest MSI um, BIOS version, um, it has done some kind of presets for setting the power limits. Um, it normally says if you're running, if you're, if you, depending on your cooling levels, normally it says if you're not running, no running, not running any cooling, if you're running air cooling, if you're running water cooling kind of thing. But they've renamed these again since. Um, and so if you're running, um, if you're running a 14900K or KF, then your power limits are going to be 253. If you're running, like me, a KS, then your power limit should be 320. That's extreme profiles. Um, but what I do is I basically use the unlimited one and I manually set everything. So you can use these presets. Use that one for that one for K or KF CPUs. This one for KS CPUs. This one if you want to manually um, set everything. Yeah, so I'm manually setting everything, so I'm doing it here. Um, so the first thing you want to do um, with these Intel um, or 13, 14 inch gen processors is fix, um, get rid of these core boosts. So you can see that here, two cores can boost up to six, 6 6.2 gigahertz. You do not want that. That will overload your um, your ring with too much voltage and you'll burn it out. Um, Intel are bringing out a microcode update with BIOS updates in mid-August, which is meant to fix that, but the damage might have been done by then and we'll see of what kind of level of performance hit we're going to get with that it might severely down clock these in which case it's going to be it's going to be a whole new video um right so yeah what i do is by basically whatever the the ratio limit is i set it manually and i set them all all the p calls all the performance cores to to 5.9 5.9 gigahertz 59 um and i but i take a note of the which cores it thinks are the fastest ones. So four and five here. So zero, one, two, three, four, and five. So you want four and five to remember that for when you um, do process affinities for your GPU and your USB, I would set the GPU affinity um, to core four and then the USB uh, controller affinity to core five because they're the two fastest. Just an FYI on that one. So yeah, I'm manually setting the limit. So when you run like a high performance power plan, you'll basically be setting all your P cores at 5.9 constantly. If you're running a K or KF 14th gen, then I, I think the limit here is 58 and you wanna set all of these to 58. Um, right, next, um, advanced CPU configuration. So some things to do in here to, to stabilize your CPU, given the, um, Intel's issues. Um, turn off hyperthreading. That really helps with overclocking um, memory uh, because it stabilizes the, it puts less workload on the um, memory controller of the CPU. So turn off hyperthreading. It will also improve your latency. You won't get as high Cinebench scores, but your games, game, FPS will be better, typically, if you turn off hyperthreading. If, if you have more than eight or more P cores, if you're running six or lower P cores, then leave hyperthreading on. That's typically the general rule. Um, again, another thing to reduce the amount of voltage going through the ring and everything else. Reduce the number of your e cores. You do not need 16 e cores for running background processes of Windows. You don't need it. Um, by halving them down to eight, you reduce the amount of voltage going through the CPU and you actually improve the performance. So this has better in game performance than all 16 have. 
yeah? So um, I've benchmarked all, all of these um, and four, four pretty much is the limit where it starts getting a lot worse and then zero, it does get worse, a lot worse. So eight I found is the sweet spot on this. So eight P cores, eight E cores. It's what you want for gaming. Right, what next? Um, turn off C states, that will help your latency as well. You don't want your CPU constantly trying to down clock, save energy, because that's not good for gaming. You will just want it running as fast as possible whilst gaming, so turn off C states. Um, enhanced turbo, that's the thing that's trying to get it to 6.2, so don't do that, so disable that. And this is where you set the power limit. So as I said before, I've got a KS, so I can set it to 320 for the um, PL1 and 2. Um, so set these both to 320 if you've got a KS. If you've got a K or KF, set these to 253. Yeah. Um, Intel say never go beyond 400 amps for the current limit. I, however, have found 400 amps actually gives <coughs> wide cruncher errors. Um, I've had to take mine down to 330 amps to stop the wide cruncher errors. Um, that's the highest I can go. So you might need to play with this to see where, see where your limit is for, for your CPU. Um, I believe the K and the KF, uh, the recommended Intel limit is 307, 307. So if you've got a K or a KF, I put 307 in here. Um, ACDC load lines, um, Intel say to do these, to have match these, but that gives massively more heat and massively worse performance. Um, so they say basically the limit is 110 here and, 100, and you should have 110 here. That's terrible, terrible performance. So um, these are pretty much the limits that I found work best with MSI, 60 on the AC and um, 110 on the DC. Um, if you want to go a bit more conservative, go 60 and 100. Yeah. Uh, the other thing you want to turn off is CEP. That crucifies your performance. That will drop your in-game performance and your benchmarks by 25% in my, in my benchmark tests I did. 25%. So you don't want these on either. They, that's basically just handicapping your CPU and you're pay, you pay for something that you're just then not getting performance wise. So um, yeah, you want to disable those. Um, and that's it for those. All right, let's go back to slot. Um, left all that alone, left all the ring alone. Definitely don't start overclocking your ring. You're going to burn it out even faster. Um, with too much voltage. Um, XMP, normally I just recommend turning on XMP, um, but I'm manually overclocking my uh, memory. So I, I've gone from 7,200 up to 7,466. That's pretty much the not the limit of my memory. It's pretty much the limit of my motherboard. I've got four slots instead of two, and that, that motherboard was the best I could get at the time. So um, that's as good as I get. If, if I got a bit of motherboard, I can go beyond 8,000 here, but I can't, so never mind. Um, I can go through the, the timing configuration afterwards um, for that. Well, let's just do that quickly now. Okay, so disabling most of these. Um, these are my custom overclock settings. No, wait, I can't use page down normally. Yeah, can you? Let's start at the top. Um, MSI have this weird thing where the bigger the bar, the smaller the bar, the, big, the bigger the overclock, but the less stable it is. Um, so I, I don't really know where you want to be aiming, but that's apparently meant to be relatively stable. Um, right, let's um, scroll down through all of these quickly. There's a lot of them. This is my overclock of my memory. Uh, CL34, 7,466, I'm running at the moment. Down to here, I think that's it for things that I've manually changed. I don't think I've set these manually. 
Uh, what was the other thing I changed? Uh, power down mode disabled as well. I don't want to do that. Right, um, let's go back to here. What else we got? Uh, fast boot is on auto. Um, on this memory fast boot. Um, digital power, I've left load line calibration on auto. If you start playing around with this, so auto is mode eight for this CPU. Makes no sense. If you go to mode seven, it will stop the droop a bit more, stop the voltage droop under load, but you'll add a, a, low, a load more temperature, 10, 15 degrees centigrade. And if anything, it's then just down clocks the frequency more and you get less performance. So what you actually need is something about mode 7.5 really for this. But I mean, these guys are miles out. Um, they need to have more increments between here and here if you want to start messing around with low line calibration with this CPU. So I'll leave that on all tight. Um, what else we got? Uh, the only other thing here, I think I've set the drown voltage because I'm manually overclocking it. You could leave these at auto if you're just using XMP. Um, CPU features, turn off a couple of things in there. Intel virtualization tech, turn that off. And VTD, turn that off. That's um, unless you're running virtual machines, you don't, you don't need these. Plus that will um, really help with your latency and performance too, turning those off. Okay, and that's um, pretty much it for overclocking. The only other thing you need to worry about in your BIOS is your fans. So if you go to fan control, which for me was in the hardware section, um, and I used to set smart fan curve modes, but these days I have software that manages the fan curves for fans that are not controlled via the BIOS. So if you set fan smart fan mode in, in the BIOS and then you have some software to manage fans, you get conflicts. Um, so you don't want both of them running. So these days what I do, the ones that are controlled in the BIOS, I just basically go through, click all full speed. Next one, all full speed. Next one, all full speed like this. Go through them all, stick them on all full speed, just for the BIOS ones. You wanna, if you want to control the other case fans, if you've got a lot of case fans and you've got some software to do it, then do that through that. And just leave all of these ones, your pump, your, 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 for your CPU running at max. That will give you the best cooling, okay? And then your temperature's left. So the temperature's about 34 on the desktop, effectively. Low 30s, about 30 normally. Well, it's quite a hot day today. Um, so I'm normally around 30 on the desktop. And that's it. Um, I don't think there's anything else. Um, when you're done, press F10. Um, and that will give you a big list of things you just changed. You press it, yes, and then you go and boot into Windows. And you should be good to go.